um, and we're on uh, chapter seven is on work, and section one is defining work, and work is uh, the product of a force exerted over a distance. So if you apply a force through a distance, then you've done work on that. A lot of times we'll see that energy has been put into it. So say you pull back a bow, uh, the this bowstring of a bow, or you pull back a rubber band where you you pull it back, you do work on it, and now that that there's energy stored in that such that you can get the same amount of work that you put into it out of it. Um, but even if you don't, let's say that you're pushing a box through a distance at a certain force, you're doing a certain amount of work on it. It depends. Uh, are you storing energy in this box by pushing it from one side of the room to the other? Maybe not. Are you storing energy in the box by lifting it higher into the air? Yes. Okay, so we'll look later at whether or not you have potential energy that you're storing in the box by doing work. Uh, we'll see that the that the unit of work is joule, named after a scientist, J-O-U-L-E, capital J, and it's equal to one newton of force, that's the force you're pushing uh, this box or whatever, times a meter. So for every newton times a meter, you've done one joule of work. You'll see too that you have energy is the ability to do work. So let's say you do have a bowstring pulled back. It has a certain amount of potential energy. That energy is also in joules. And we'll see that, that those joules are now able to do work. The amount of stored energy in that bowstring can make a, um, an arrow go uh, a newton meter. If there's a joule of energy stored into it, it would make one newton arrow, one uh, a newton of weight, go, go one meter. That's how much energy would be stored if you were storing one joule of work. So here's just some ideas of what joules look like. Okay, so melting an ice cube would be 10 to the 4 joules. Okay, you can do that with your hand, so that's not a lot. 10 to the, 10 to the 1 is 10. 100,000, 10,000, okay, so 10,000 joules in order to melt an ice, an ice cube. Hmm. So putting it in a frying pan and melting it in a, in a few minutes or in your hand and making it last a long time, that would be a joule. A 100 watt, watt light bulb for one minute, 6,000 joules. So a joule is not very much. You can say, okay, just lighting a light, a hundred watt light bulb for a minute is six thousand joules of work done. You have to push electrons through a wire, okay, against their will, and um, so so you are doing work on it, and it is not easy to do. You have to put energy into it in order to do it. Um, so Mount St. Helens eruption happened when I was in eighth grade, ten to the eighteen. That's a lot of energy. Okay, so that's just some ideas. Now, if you've got if you've got uh, components of a force, so your force here is at an angle, but I'm walking, um, or I'm walking to the right or horizontally. I'm not going up and down. So the sine of theta, remember, is the component that you're lifting up on the suitcase. That's just wasted. That's against, you know, that's just against the weight. I'm not moving a distance up and down. In this example, I'm moving a distance right and left, which means that the work has to be the force times the cosine, that's the, just the horizontal component of the force, times the distance that I've traveled. So you may have to break your force up into left, right, or up, down, depending, so that you would know how much of that force is going right and left. The rest of that force is wasted. Okay, it's only the part that, it's the force that's going through a distance that we are talking about when we get to work. So here's another example, the guy going down a sliding board. Well, that's the adjacent side of the right triangle. If you can see the opposite side of theta would be, would be weight times the sine of theta. So he's moving along that sliding board, so that would be the cosine again. So the, the force times the cosine of theta times the distance, 
okay? And you can put it in any order. It's just, it's just products. FD cosine theta or F cosine theta D, it's the same, would be the work done, okay? How much work does it take for, and in this case, it's, it's the gravity that's, that's causing him to go down the slide, but it's still a certain amount of energy it takes to make him go. We'll see that if the in the first example the force the part of the force okay is horizontal part is vertical the vertical part is wasted the part that's horizontal is going in the same direction as the as the direction okay the, your direction is going from the left to the right well your force is going from the left to the right or at least part of it is that means that your work is going to be greater than zero there's going to be a positive work done. If your force is at a 90 degree angle to your distance, meaning there's no left-right component of your force at all, well, then your work is zero because it's not just a force times a distance, but it's a force going through a distance, the force that's going in a direction of the distance that you've measured. Okay, so in this example, work would be zero. In the case where the left-right component of the force is actually going contrary to the to the distance that you're looking at, then you've actually got negative work. Okay, you took away from the from the work done. Okay, so for instance, you've moved something, but you haven't moved it through a force. You've moved it against that force um, in the other direction and actually done negative work on something. So you can have negative work. You can have positive work. You can have zero work. This last part is quite simple. It looks scary. This math looks scary, but all it's saying is that if you have force coming in from various directions, okay, so you have you have a net force where lots of different forces, you simply are taking every force that's going in that direction, okay, the direction that you're looking at, all those forces added up, and your total work is going to be the total force in the direction of the of the distance times the distance times whatever uh, sine function that you need in order to make it part of a component. Like uh, if the force is not aligned with the distance, then it's got to be some kind of a sine, cosine uh, function, and then that would have to be figured in. So that is 7-1. Nice and easy. Of course, the problems probably are not as easy as the lecture, but this gives you an idea. So let's review. W equals F times D. That's not so hard.